This is David Kurtz with TPM Media. We're here at uh, Netroots Nation in Austin with former Congressman Bob Barr of Georgia, who's now running on the Libertarian ticket for president this year. Thanks for joining us. David, good to be with you. We uh, know you primarily as a very conservative Republican during the Clinton years. and describe no, you know me pr as, <laughs> as a very handsome, articulate candidate for president. That's how you know me. So explain to me the transformation from what I think most people here might say Republican bomb thrower in Congress to Libertarian candidate for president. Well, how about from Republican bomb thrower to Libertarian bomb thrower? Uh, I believe in uh, in our in our in our government. I believe in freedom. I believe in liberty. In the old in the Iron Rand uh, view, uh, that government which governs least governs best. Uh, and we've become particularly the Republican Party has moved so far away from its individual liberty roots that it barely even bothers talking about them anymore. Uh, the Republican Party has become, in, in every instance one can think of, the party of big government. Uh, it's bad enough the amount of money that the Republican Party spends, but what's even worse is the amount of power that the Republican Party and the Republican President and the Republican Congress, up until the time they lost it, uh, just sort of tripped over themselves, giving power to the executive branch, the power to spy on American citizens without ever going to a court, the power to deny the citizenry the right to even appear before a court to determine whether the government was holding you. Uh, on and on and on it goes. Uh, and. To me, the Republican Party left me. I didn't leave the Republican Party. The Libertarian Party, on the other hand, is very much a party that is deeply, firmly, consistently, indeed aggressively committed to rolling back that tide of big government. That's why it appeals to me so much, and that's why I'm, I'm a standard bearer in this election. Uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi was here this morning and actually referenced you in her speech. She described there being allies of progressives yet on the right, especially on civil liberties issues. Uh, I think she was a little surprised, having served with you in the House, that uh, that she would find herself an ally with you now. But is that a, a sentiment that you agree with? Is that part of the reason you're here today? It certainly is part of the reason why I'm here today and is part of the reason why I'm the Libertarian nominee for president. On uh, many of these core issues of government power, the liberals and the conservatives, progressives and conservatives, whatever label one wants to use, sort of the two ends of the ideological spectrum, find themselves together. It comes full circle. Uh, and that is the true progressives and the two true conservatives, not the neocons. And that really is the essence of libertarianism, uh, keeping government within the bounds of the Constitution, which is minimized government, and maximizing individual liberty. Uh, and there are, there are so many areas that one could point to that are symptomatic of what's happened to Washington, and particularly the Republican Party in recent years that's caused it to leave me and many other libertarian-leaning Republicans in the dust. Was there a, a signature event? for you that that caused the break it, it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint any one particular event because there have been so many of them but a couple in particular uh, for example the USA Patriot Act which I've been working against for the last five five and a half years I voted for it initially based on a number of assurances and promises and changes that had already been made by the administration but in every instance in which the administration promised us they would do or not do something such as they would not seek to uh, expand it beyond uh, terrorism cases they would not seek to change it and expand its powers even more that they would report to the congress and to the american people fully and openly on how it was being used in every one of those instances they went back on their word uh, and what we have seen with the USA Patriot Act is sort of symptomatic. Uh, you give the administration an inch and they take a mile. Uh, they stretch it beyond any relationship uh, to what Congress intended or what is appropriate. Uh, perhaps more than any other single act, though, uh, having a president go before the American people and essentially admit that he had ordered spying on American citizens in their own country here in the United States of America without going to a court for a court order, which is required, for example, under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, epitomized uh, to me uh, the bankruptcy of the party in terms of it of having any respect for individual liberty or for constitutional precepts of government. The general perception of your campaign is that it would be more likely to hurt the Republican candidate, Don McCain, obviously, than it would Barack Obama. Is that your assessment as well in terms of where your support is going to come from? No, our support certainly will come from 
disenchanted or, dis or disgruntled Republicans uh, who cannot vote for uh, Senator McCain. Uh, it, but it will also come from blue-collar Democrats, for example, who support uh, Second Amendment rights as part of the, you know, the, the, the panoply of, of civil liberties uh, that they support. But more than anything else, uh, the support for my candidacy and for the Libertarian Party is going to come from young people. Uh, there's a huge universe, a reservoir of young people out there that are not wedded to the two-party system. The quo parties of the Republican and Democrat Party like their parents and grandparents are, they're open to new ideas. They can see further down the road, perhaps, than many people in my generation, to what the constant growth of government power and government spending is doing to their future. So they're ready for change. They recognize that if they go in and just vote for the Republican or vote for the Democrat, they're basically throwing their vote away. It's not going to matter. So that's really more than any other particular group, the group that's going to make a difference uh, for our campaign. We're here at Netroots Nation, so I think this is an appropriate question. The other candidates have had to answer it as well, and that's how uh, competent are you with computers now? I know John McCain has indicated he is not terribly literate, needs help from his wife in order to do email and that kind of thing. Are you uh, tech savvy? Well, uh, certainly not to the extent that, uh, that my sons and, uh, and our grandkids are, uh, but uh, I think the computer is a, is, is a wonderful uh, means of communication. Uh, I heard on the news uh, recently, saw a soundbite uh, where Senator McCain was speaking, and he said, I hate bloggers. Uh, I love the blogosphere. I mean, people that, that have a free interchange of ideas. And the one thing more than anything else that we need to guard against is government intrusion into and regulation of the internet. I think that's a real danger that we need to be very, very cognizant of because, as you know, that government control can be very insidious. It can come directly. It can come through manipulation and favors to telecommunications companies, for example. Uh, it can come through taxation. There are a lot of ways it can do it, but we need to be very careful not to let that happen. So I'm not sure I caught the answer. Do you do email? Oh, I do a, a lot of emails, probably probably in the neighborhood of several hundred or a thousand emails a day, you know, off of this, uh, off of this oh, thing. Wow, okay. He pulled out the BlackBerry, so I guess that's a badge of credibility here. We're with... I, I uh, do know how to use it. <laughs> that's uh, former Congressman Bob Barr, Libertarian candidate for president here at Netroots Nation in Austin. I'm David Kurtz for TPM Media.